Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. On today's video, I'm replacing this outside outlet that has clearly seen better days. This is gonna be on a brick home, so I'm gonna go over some specific methods about that, but you can use it for any outlet. Rather than have it hanging off the side of the house like it is now, I'm actually going to recess it into the brick. I wanna cut it into the brick, have it sit nice and flush, and then have a nice cover on the outside rather than this silly thing here. Clearly water was getting in it. This thing was not secured properly. It was just a mess. So I'm gonna hopefully clean this up and have a better functioning and better looking outlet on the back of my house. Before we get rolling here, I just wanna state that this is not about wiring a new outlet. I have existing wiring, an existing breaker, all that stuff. So this is just about installing a new outlet box on the outside of a brick home. So I am fully admitting that I'm glossing over the most important part of electrical work, which is making sure the breaker is off and the wires are not live. That's because this breaker has been off since I purchased the house. Shortly after we bought it, it popped because look at this outlet and it's been off ever since. So please make sure you double check that. Do not dive into this stuff with live wires. Once you're sure about that, you can get into disassembly and ripping out the old equipment like I'm doing here. One last thing before we get rolling into any major work here, I just wanna cover the tools that I use to get this done. Number one, I would say, is your hammer drill. Make sure it has that hammer function. You can probably get away with it if you don't, but it makes really quick work. I wouldn't go out and buy a new drill, but if you've got one or you need to buy a new one, get one with the hammer function if you own a brick house. Next to that are some concrete drill bits. Between that and the hammer drill, it's quick work. Other tools I used are this grinder. You can pick up a cheap one, this was 20 bucks really helpful when you're cutting that hole. A die grinder is optional, but it helps clean up the hole a little bit. So if you've got one, you can use it. If not, I wouldn't worry about it. If you're gonna be doing brickwork, trowels are really necessary. Get a nice standard one to scoop the mortar and then a pointing trowel at the joints. Next to that, some chisels, a hammer, pretty standard, a brush to clean out any joints before you put the mortar back in. Right here, I've just got some Tapcon screws those should be used to secure the box to the house. You don't want to just mortar it into place. And with that, let's get rolling. I'm installing a Tamac outlet box and cover. They're both waterproof outdoor models. I found them at Lowe's, so I'll link those in the description. My game plan today is to install it horizontally, because if I install it vertically, I have to cut through three courses of brick, and the brick is a lot harder than the mortar, so it's easier to install it horizontally than vertically. It fits almost perfectly between the two courses of brick, so I just have to cut the brick away in this middle course and then hog out the mortar a little bit. I'll be good to go. I am cutting these tabs off because I don't have access to mount it to the rim joist from behind, and I don't want to mount it on the outside of the house, so they're effectively useless for my application today. So here you can see I've cut the tabs off. They do sell boxes without these tabs. I just couldn't find them in stock at my local stores, so this is my next best bet, but by all means, if you can find it without the tabs, just skip this step. The wire comes through a wood rim joist behind the brick, so I am going to center the box on the existing hole. I just want to keep that wiring as straight as possible coming through and into the box, so you can place it wherever you want, but that's what I'm doing today. So here I'm just marking left to right where it's going to go. It is fitting between the courses of brick, so I don't really care about the top and bottom. I'm more concerned with left to right. I did start out with an angle grinder, and I don't think it's the best method. I've actually never done it before. I did it for this video because I hadn't owned one previously, and I wanted to give it a shot. So you'll see in a little bit that I typically just drill some relief holes with my hammer drill and then use a chisel. That being said, the brick and mortar used on everyone's home is unique, so either go with a tried and true method that you know of, or if you see a different method than what I'm using here, go that route, find out whatever's easiest. So back to my method of the relief holes and the chisel, typically I do a line of relief holes around the border and then chisel it all out. Because I have the angle grinder cuts here, I didn't do that. I just did the corners and then other spots where I needed to and just went to work with a hammer and chisel. I'm sure there's a better way to do this, but considering most homeowners probably own a drill and a pack of chisels is really cheap and easy to come by, this is a really inexpensive way to get a hole in the side of your brick house. The mortar in this specific area is a bit rough. You can see it's kind of disconnected from the brick and as I'm drilling into it and trying to chip it away, it's coming out in huge pieces. It is what it is. It's easier to pull it all out and remortar the joint than to try to salvage it. It's probably also better for the brick because if it's already disconnected and kind of messed up, to patch in there is not that great. You'd rather pull it out, clean it, and then just remortar the joint. Here you can see a little close up of my relief hole method. I just drill some holes right through the mortar, hit it with a chisel, and then it goes from a really rough edge to a nicer, smoother surface. I'm sure you saw everything falling apart in the previous shot and the brick coming loose. 
Luckily, this is a brick facade, so it's non-structural. This can come out, it's not a big deal. I mean, technically the wall could collapse, but not a problem, the rest of it is solid. So I was able to cut this edge of the brick, and now I just have to repair it all. So with everything cut, you just wanna make sure that your box fits. Again, this would have been a little more difficult to cut this edge had I not been able to take the brick out, but nothing's impossible. Maybe a die grinder or some other tool, you would have gotten it done. Obviously you have to make sure that the box fits in the hole you cut in the brick. The other thing you need to check is where it sits depth wise. In my case, the brick is much deeper than the box, so I need to make sure that the box is sitting out flush with the edge of the brick because the only thing I want proud of the brick is that cover. Too far out isn't really a problem, it'll just be further out than I want it to be, and as long as you have the wiring, it's not really a problem, but if it's too far in, you won't be able to get the cover on. So really that's what I'm checking here. Any dust or dirt that's present from making the hole will affect the mortar's ability to stick to the brick, so you wanna make sure that it's clean of any debris. Typically, you'll see a fine-haired brush being used. I don't have one of those, but I do have a shop vac, so I use that instead. It seemed to work great. I didn't have any problems with the mortar sticking, so if you've got a shop vac, I think as long as you're thorough, vacuum any dust and dirt away, you'll be more than fine. I am far from a pro here, so if I'm way off base, someone please comment and let me know. I'm not trying to intentionally mislead anyone in this video. That being said, the way that I mixed the mortar is so that it was thick enough that it doesn't immediately slide off the trowel. If the mortar is too wet, it's going to squeeze out of the joints, it's not going to hold anything into place, and it's going to make a huge mess. If it's too dry, it's not going to bond correctly, and everything's just going to fall apart. So you have to get the mix right in the middle. Now you can mortar the box into the wall. Hopefully you're not resetting brick like I am, and because I am, I'm not showing a vital part of this process, which is physically securing the box to the brick. You want to make sure that the box is physically secured to the structure with some Tapcon screws into the brick, or if the rim joist is close enough, you can run some screws from the back of the box into the rim joist. Because I was resetting that one brick, I didn't want to attach the box to that brick and then have the brick not bond to the rest of the wall. I wanted that brick to bond to the rest of the wall like it should have and then secure the box to it. Because I wanted to make sure that brick bonded to the rest of the wall, but I also wanted to close the hole in the side of my house, I let everything dry before I ran the screws into the brick. While it may not be ideal, I didn't destroy anything when I ran the screws in after the fact. The box hasn't ripped off the side of the house. The brick is still secure. So I think it's an okay method to use if you run into a couple problems like I did here. One last thing I want to mention that I didn't show here is making sure that the bricks are wet before you apply the mortar. If the bricks are dry, it'll suck all the moisture out of that mortar and then it won't bond properly. With new construction, they typically soak bricks. That way they're completely saturated with water. On an existing structure, you can't do that. Especially on my house, I have fiberboard sheathing. Any amount of moisture just destroys it. Because of that, I didn't want to introduce any more problems. I just made sure the bricks were damp, but not saturated to the point that I'm going to cause myself any mold or mildew problems down the line. So from here, just keep adding the mortar. It's a pretty simple process. Keep packing it in the joint, smooth it out with a pointing trowel, make it all look as nice as you can, but remember that you can clean it up with a sponge and some water at the end, so it doesn't have to be perfect, but Kind of like spackling, the better job you do at the beginning, the easier it is to clean it all up at the end. I am going to skip ahead here and just say that once the mortar is done and everything is reasonably set, you can get to assembling the outlet back together. For me, installing this was a little different than your typical outlet. I had to install the cover and the outlet to the box at the same time. I'm not sure if that was because of the box style or if the cover is supposed to be like that. Either way, you can kind of see how it worked here. If you have a different style box, it might work typically where you attach the outlet and then the cover on top of that. So either way, it's not really hard. If you are familiar with outlets and covers and things, I'm sure you can figure it out. If you do have any questions, just let me know. And here we have the completed product. I haven't had any issues with it in the months after this installation and before making this video. So it has lasted and worked fine, even with those little hiccups that I mentioned earlier. The outlet and cover were off the shelf items from my local Lowe's, but I will leave the link for those in the description if you're interested. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them. I try to answer everybody. Or if you're looking for some more one-on-one -on -one time, you can check out my Yodel profile, which is linked in the description. If this video helped you out and you enjoyed it, think about subscribing. Thanks for watching, everybody.